Hey everyone, it's Patrick from Vicious Computers. Don't mind the mess. Today we're doing a, an action cam point of view video, something quick and easy. Um, because this will be a prerequisite for another video, a bigger one where I have more time to set up all the cameras and do a pro professional production. Geez, Nova, I'm recording. You're making so much noise. At any rate, I at least got the microphone out so we have good audio. And what I wanted to talk about today was, there you are, there's the noisemaker. I love you. All right. The Apex 300 from Blue Eddy, I charged it. It's been sitting here. It's been doing nothing today. Finally, I'm discharging it. It's running the air conditioning right now in the bedroom. And I opened up the, the Hub D1. So this is one of the reasons I bought the Apex 300. I really liked the fact that they had this accessory that you can plug right into it. And what I really liked about it was this. It's supposed to be what the, a 50 amp Anderson port, which I think will give us direct access to the battery, which is what I'll be testing in the next video. But this video, we need to make the connector. So I opened it up and you got this Anderson connector inside of that bag. And that's it. Like, that's it. <laughs> they give you the, the hub, the box, and this, but you can't do anything with this. It doesn't have the pins. It doesn't have anything. So I don't even know why they give you this. Um, so that's why I figured my video might help somebody because I had already previously anticipated needing my own and I ordered my own from Amazon. And as you can see, besides the color difference, I wanted red. They are exactly the same in every single way. And of course I got the pins that you needed that weren't included with the unit. So we're going to, I'm going to show you how to build this connector and make your own cable. And then of course, the next video will use that connector so I can start testing the Apex 300. So that's why we're doing the point of view filming. I just got a quick break here to do a video and I wanted to try to make this connector in person and show you how it's done. So we won't cut our wire yet. This is six gauge wire. This is a six gauge um, connection, so we should be good there. Let's, uh, I don't want to waste too much of my wire. I'm getting low, at least on six gauge. So what I like to do is I'll look at the depth of this. That way I get a perfect amount of insulation stripped off. So it's about like right there. I just double check. Yep, that's about right. So we'll give this guy a little bit of a twist. That comes off. Our fit. Perfect. Um, I could put some heat shrink or something. Jesus, I'm running out of space, like legitimately running out of space in this place. Those cheap crimpers on Amazon, man, I'll put a link to this guy. I'll buy it once and be done. This thing is way stronger than the cheap ones, but the main reason I bought this one is I wanted to buy it one time and be done. This one has the die set for everything you could possibly need. I mean, I, I doubt that most of you guys are gonna be crimping 600 MCM plus, but it's there. But it also, despite being like a 20 ton, 50 ton, whatever it is, it goes all the way down to, to 10 gauge. So that's awesome. So we need um, six gauge for this one that we're working on now. There's eight, there's four, so six is probably in. Yeah. So we've got the six gauge uh, already in there. And then it has half sizes. So somewhere in here is gonna be like a, a six and a half, basically, uh, in case you need it to be a little bit tighter or a little bit looser based on tolerances. But if you have good wire and you have good lugs, 
they, they should, generally speaking, just fit and not have any issues. So we'll tighten this up, get it in the right direction. And what I actually like to do is I'll take that out. There's a little flared end on it. So what I do is I insert my lugs until the flared end is just catching on the die. And I'll slowly crank this down until it's just putting a little bit of friction on it so that it can't move. Orientation doesn't matter too much because it's an octagon. And then I will insert my wire, hold it in place and give it a couple of presses to get the friction. And now I feel the friction on there. I know the wire won't go anywhere. And then I'll kind of actually put some like umps <laughs> into it, release that crimp. And let me show you what we get. That is super, super on there. Really well crimped. Like I did leave just a tiny, tiny bit of exposure, but it's gonna be inside of here, so that's not a big deal. And we need to do this one. Repeat the process. So there's no male slash female difference on these as far as uh, connectors. They're the same. It's just a matter of hooking the right wires to the right place kind of thing. Sorry for as much quiet. I'm just trying to focus. So what I'm putting the link on this video is probably the most important thing for most viewers, which is these. So you know you get the right part. And two, the crimper, just in case you're interested. Because I already did the research and that was the one I determined was the best. Now we can actually put this together. So the negative black wire on this side. There it goes. They only go in one way, they lock in place, they can be removed, but they're a little bit of a pain in the butt to remove. So, there we go, that one clicked nicely. So, that's it. That's a very nice, secure, stable connection. I had a flashlight, I just saw it. Here we go. Let me just get some light. So you can see, ooh, not too much light. That's what it looks like inside of there. These are nice, strong, high amperage connectors. This one's rated for 50 amps, and we're using six gauge wire. All right, let's do the other side of this cable as well. It's gonna be a general purpose cable, especially because it's six gauge. I'm not gonna put like an, an XT60 connector or anything crazy like that on there. I'm going to put ferrules on it though so our, our raw wire doesn't get distressed. And we can hook it up to, well, I'll show you in the next video. I don't want to spoil it. So let's not make too much length. Because remember the actual hub itself gives us some length. I think for my usage, I mean it's better to be long than short. I'll just go right there. <coughs>
double and double, triple check everything. You know, it's just measure twice, cut once situation, especially when you're working with expensive copper wire. Uh, it's in your best interest to get it right the first time. And of course, it's in your best interest to make everything properly electrically safe so you don't have a fire. All right, there we go, guys. Anderson, six gauge ferrules, just to keep the wires together and keep it safe. And here's our hub. And this is how it goes. Boom. That's it. I'll see you guys in the next video because the next video we actually put this to the test and I'm going to show you some cool stuff, I hope. It's a hypothesis until I actually test it. But I have a very high suspicion that I'm going to be able to show you something cool. So once again, this was Patrick from Vicious Computers and I'll see you guys next time.